What's up, everybody? RBL Commissioner Pat Barker here. Before we jump into this week's episode, I had a very exciting and special announcement about our world championship uh, tomorrow in Denver. We've talked about it a lot on the pod. We've encouraged everybody near Denver to go to the show. Um, Well, if you're not one of those people, if you're not near Denver and you want to check it out, uh, I'm excited to announce we will be broadcasting it live on our YouTube channel. Um, It's the first time we're live streaming an event here on YouTube. It's completely free of charge. Um, This is for all the the diehard fans and the hardcore fans who have been asking. We we don't want to wait for the edited version. We want to watch it live. It's the Super Bowl. We got to see it live. We got your back. Um, So we're going to be airing it live. Then we're going to be pulling it down and posting a fully edited, uh, much improved version later. But for the people who want to watch it live, it will be tomorrow, January 31st, Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. roughly, mountain time. Uh, Since mountain is the one time zone nobody uh, knows about, let me make it simpler. 10 o'clock, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. If you're over in the U.K. and you want to watch Shalaka Kurup and Ryan Cullen, it's an early morning or a late night for you, 3.30 uh, a.m. UK time, grab a pint and uh, turn on the, the championship. I, I couldn't be more excited for this. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of RBL Weekly. RBL Weekly, here we are. Roast Battle League Commissioner Pat Barker, creator and host of the Roast Battle, Brian Moses. Um, busy... Busy week, uh, month leading up to uh, championship week, but championship we're, we're finally week, baby. here. Championship week, baby, tomorrow. Yeah. Championship Wednesday, Denver. Crazy. You'll be there. I'll be there. You'll yeah. be there. I'll be there. It's going to be fun, man. I'm excited. It's the, uh, it's the championships. It's our first. Yep. Right? So we get to do the trial and error this year and then really rock and roll going into next season. I'm so excited for next season. It's been... um. You know, after the championship, we're going to go, we have about a month before the new season starts on March 1st, and we're going to go full bore with the podcast into that, introducing our four new cities, our division realignment, our rule changes. There's a lot to cover um, for next season. It's been really busy behind the scenes selecting those four cities. They are officially locked in now. I had to uh, I had to make send some difficult emails and, uh, you know, um, but I'm excited about who we're adding. So, uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff coming up, man. I, I can't believe that this is all sort of... This this, this started as a very ambitious um, project, putting together a worldwide league. And, uh, yeah, here we are, about to crown a champ. Yeah, this is what Pete Rozelle and, you know, feels like, or who was before uh, Bud Selig? Uh, Bart Giamatti. Really? I think so. Who's, who was the first commissioner of the MLB? I think it was Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Mountain Landis? Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, you got to think. This is how they kind of <laughs> created this thing. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. It's very time consuming. You think it's a side project, right? Like, oh, I'm going to start this band as a side project. It's a hobby. And right. then it becomes your whole life. Yeah. To a very upsetting degree. Sorry. About um, that. I am. I, I, I'm not going to blame my hair loss on this. It was go. It was going before, but this is not helping. Definitely got some weight loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down a, down a couple pounds. All I'm doing is uh, booking roast battles and lifting weights. That's yeah. that's my my life now. You don't need Ozempic. You just need roast battle to stress you out. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, stress stress weight loss. Can't recommend it enough. Um, this is my favorite part, by the way. Uh, they've already fast forwarded this part. But this show really is for like geeks of this sport. This is like AM radio. Yeah. <laughs> Sports radio for uh, people who love this sport roast battle. Everybody else just hates it and they fast forward it. This nah, isn't nah, for nah, you. Not everybody hates it. Yeah. Not no, I everybody mean, like, geeks hates obviously it. love it, but this is like, this is for the geeks. We do this for the geeks. For sure. It's, yeah. not, it's not for everybody. In fact, you know, you're usually the comments guy. Do you mind if I address a couple comments oh, on this go. week's episode? Yes. Well, the diff- the difference between you and I I don't address any of the trolls okay. or the 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 haters. You know what I'm saying? Because they're coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. People are saying mean things about me, bro. They really are. I've I've noticed some of them. Uh, you guys are really good at this. Some of them. Some of them yeah. are. Some of them are. Ba- you guys. Some of you guys need work on your insults. But um, I can't. I can't get into that because then my mom's going to end up on YouTube and she's going to be like responding to people. I don't. I don't need that. Yeah. But I want to respond to a couple comments that I thought had a little bit of merit. Um, because I, as the commissioner, you know, you got to speak to our fans. And one of them was on this podcast last week, somebody said uh, something to the effect of, hey, if you want your channel to like really blow up, more battles, 
less commentary. And I read that and I was like, okay, that's a valid perspective. And then they were like, let me repeat myself. More battles, less commentary. I'm like, okay, now you're now you're being rude. And then they were like, one more time. Just so they said it like four times. It was fucking insane. It's a rule of threes, Pat. Yeah, they got so condescending towards the end. But the overall message um, of more battles. The only thing I want to say to that is um, skip this shit. Just skip it. If you don't want to watch it, I, my feelings won't be hurt. Please skip ahead. Roast Battle, uh, RBL Weekly, adding these other cities is probably going to be expanding to about seven battles a week on this podcast. Ooh. We've already done 70-some episodes. That means we've put out roughly 400 battles, the majority of which have not been seen anywhere else. Um, and going forward between seven a week on RBL Weekly and the weekly drops we have on Thursday from either the Belly Room, the Mothership, or Jam in the Van... We're basically going to be putting out about 10 to 12 battles a week, every week, completely free of charge for our fans. I don't think lack of battles is going to be our problem. (laughs) I I really don't. This is on a channel with over 480 posts, probably. Yes. I want to say half of or maybe 60% of them are probably battles. You can go all over. We're actually going to an old battle right now. Yeah. Right? With a, that's on another channel. We're watching We're watching some classic battles today, and that, that brings me to my next point. There's tons of stuff in our archives that I would frankly love. If, if you tune into the show and you're like, I don't like the commentary, I just want to watch battles, please fall down a roast battle rabbit hole. <laughs> because, there, I mean, there's shit like when we were preparing a couple weeks ago, Omid Singh versus Leah Kajanian, which we watched, was at like 1,100 views outstanding there's so many hidden gems in there like just go go look yeah at it. Go that was the golden it. era go watch the old stuff it looks like vhs tape but you gotta go watch it because that's what you're looking for you're not looking for us talking about this like like two addicted idiots to roast battle because we are we love talking this sport yeah um but yeah you don't have to listen to this but i will say this i love the haters I'm like MF Doom. I want this my fan base to be all haters. Well, you're on your way. Keep it coming. <laughs> I already know, like, this is like, you know, this is yeah, the yeah, YouTube, yeah. you know, they, yeah. they, they're they all racist. I love it. Keep it coming. I mean, chill with the slurs, but keep the hate coming. Well, see, that's why I don't like the hate, because yeah. I can't even blame racism. I'm like, oh, they just legitimately don't like me. This right. is <laughs> I, I I have no excuse. Yeah, I'm you, white. They should be on my side. You'll get to your hate speech and fat shaming. Just, you know, fast forward it. Yeah, exactly. Um... And then the other comment actually was on the most recent uh, episode we dropped. Um, I was one of the judges on that. And there was a battler who had a kind of a rough time up there. And the judges were a little bit hard on him. And somebody left a comment like, how dare the judges be so mean to this guy? The RBL Weekly judge is so smug and uh, he needs to take a shower. Now I'm going to start with the back end of that comment first. Despite how it might look on camera, my personal hygiene is impeccable. Outstanding. Thank you. Yes. Shower daily. Big proponent of deodorant. Spray on a little Kenneth Cole. Tch, tch, you know what okay. I mean? Like, okay. yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm saying. So I, they were wrong about that. They might have been right about the first thing. We were we were hard on this guy. I actually I actually DM this guy to apologize for that because he's he's so new to comedy and he did a couple things. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go watch it, even though I look like a dick in the clip. I'll be the first one to admit it. We're all pretty mean to Scott. Yeah, we're all pretty mean to Scott. And he did a couple things that my perception in the room was he was taking the battle lightly and didn't care. But looking back on it, it's like one of those uh, like magic eye pictures where when you step away, you see the real picture, which is he was so nervous because he cared so much. So in the room, I was kind of giving it to him because I was like, oh, you're going up there and not, acting like you give a fuck, but it was a defense mechanism, right? So you right. see it after the fact. And that that's the one thing I'll say about judging that's tough is like, it's not always about picking a winner or just making funny jokes. Sometimes you have to read the energy of the room after a bad performance and be like, what can I say to kind of like reset the room or, and sometimes you miss, right? Right. Sometimes you miss. So uh, those were the the two comments uh, that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to address. Please, I swear to God, I'm not mean. Um, and I don't need to shower more yes. than I already do. I'll say this about what Pat's saying. Sure. We were a little hard on Scott. I think towards the end, I was even like, oh, we were being a little hard on him. I think I pulled back towards the end. Because we did. It did we feel like did, it was, yeah. it was piling on. But how come you guys don't do that for none of the black judges? Mm. You guys just keep piling on them. You guys hate the judges who are black. 
Nobody else, none of the fat judges, none of the gay judges who happen to be white or any of that stuff. It's just you guys just keep picking on my judges who were obnoxious and talk a lot and loud. And anyway, let's get to this first battle. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this week's episode. Now, for this week's episode, we are actually doing uh, a Roastmasters retrospective. This is, we're, we're stepping in the Wayback Machine to 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, before we had a worldwide league, before there were 16 cities, there were basically two. We started here in L.A., and was New York the first city to jump on board and do an officially sanctioned version of our show yes i remember i reached out to the stand and patrick and those cats and uh yeah they suggested that Luis j gomez be the host and i was like let's get after it and then uh it's been history ever since so shout out Luis j gomez legion of skanks crew rich voss uh patrick milligan big the other stand, big j i mean the list goes on that's where yamanika comes from that's where all those guys like kind of came out of there eli sayers it's too much to even talk about, but yeah, I shout out Roast Masters, which was our sister show to uh, Roast Battle. Yeah, and truth be told, the reason I did this episode today, full disclosure, hundred percent honesty, I've been so busy with the championship and expanding the league mm -hmm. that it got to the day before the podcast, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I have to do something where battles are readily available, and I did okay. not have a tie-in for this episode. It was kind of random, but then I started watching these battles. Yeah. And I haven't watched these battles in years. And the tie-in for me as we expand the league and we have more and more young people battling who just discovered this a couple of years ago. These are game tapes that should be studied by everybody oh. from a writing perspective. With a new season coming up, everybody wanting to make the playoffs, everybody wanting to make the world championship... I think anybody who's serious about roasting should study what we're about to watch. Study the joke writing and see what they're doing and try to implement parts of it into your own thing. Um, in terms of how the jokes are structured, how they're written, there is some beautiful, beautifully written jokes that we're going to see today, and I'm excited to watch them. Joke writer showcase. Let's exactly. showcase them. This is, uh, this is the old school shit. Most of these battles are three rounds, so we're just going to kind of run through them. And uh, we're going to start with a championship match. Um between maybe arguably the best roast battler to come out of New York, Eli Sayers, who was the champion, defended the title for several years without losing it. Um, only two losses on his uh, his resume ever. Going up, this is a he's defending the title against somebody who, after roast battle, has blown up and really has a nice career right now as a comic, uh, Dina Hashem. This is a, a fantastic battle, and uh, let's jump into it. Quartz. It's very brave of you not to dye your grays as an older woman in showbiz. First floor. <laughs> Dina, Dina is a Muslim. It's uh, crazy that they sent a drone over here to ruin our lives. Uh, she, she does have some credits. You may know her from crashing her truck into people in Manhattan last week. Oh. Holy shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, Eli looks like his mom wrote him notes to get out of gym class. <laughs> you look like Mrs. Doubtfire if Robin Williams played her today. When you talk like this, people think something is more clever than it actually is. Something seems more impressive if it was written by a retard. Like the Koran. Wow! This is getting to be Eli. 
security. <laughs> Shout out Jeff Ross. Eli has crippling OCD. He sometimes washes his hands up until they bleed. But you would too if you had to touch his dick. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, tail. my hands bleed. Just doing an impression of your gynecologist. Oh! <laughs> but uh, that was a good one, Mindy failing. <laughs> Look, it's hard. It's hard being a woman in comedy. Not just in comedy, any. Like, I assume it's hard being a woman in whatever field you're in. <laughs> Eli, Eli, you dusty child of neglect. <laughs> Your father is a Mennonite priest, which means you are the only little boy he's never hugged. Shot. That's true, that's true, I'm Mennonite. I'm surprised you're not Amish, the way you can suck the electricity out of a room. <laughs> Dina? Dina? Dina, you Gaza stripper. <laughs> your father left you when you were seven years old and you have a bad relationship with your mom. Dina, you should be grateful for your mother for all she's done. Your mother has the hardest job in the world. ISIS spy. <laughs> Tried a little misdirect there, didn't quite connect. Round two, fight. I have a lot of Muslim jokes, but I actually hate it when people judge Muslims. Right? Like, you're not responsible for 9-11. You were actually heartbroken when you found out about it earlier that year. Boy, your people, your people were mad about the election. They were furious that a woman was running. <laughs> Some people say that Dina could become the best female comic in the city, but it's messed up to even say it like that, right? Like, why does she have to be the best female comic in the city? Why can't she just be the 148th best comic in the city? <laughs> You know, you know it's a good joke when she calls you the N-word. <laughs> Jeremiah's there, too. He's 148. Oh, hey, you 149, nigga. What? 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 Dude, they're typing their negative YouTube comments right now. Dina? Dina, uh, Dina, Dina's unemployed. Dina's unemployed, but her boyfriend recently went nine to five. From his last girlfriend to her. So good. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> she liked that one. <laughs> um, Eli and, uh, and I met up before the battle, and um, he just he just said some things that I think you guys should hear. So. <laughs> so Eli, you've won eleven battles. How does it feel to be the champ? I've alienated all my loved ones. Wow, that belt must mean a lot to you. What are you going to do if you lose? I'm going to get my mom on the phone. I'm going to call her the N-word. Easy, Eli. You don't want to end up at the center of a scandal. How do you feel about this Harvey Weinstein stuff? I don't think his movies are all that good. He just seems to me like a really great person. What about Kevin Spacey and that 14-year-old? Look, I used to be a child, and uh, inside scoop, kids want to get fucked by adults. Well, good luck in our battle. How are you going to celebrate if you win? Gay retard sex. <laughs> Final round. Fight! Eli, you poor man's poor man. <laughs> <laughs> that championship belt is the longest you've owned something without it getting repoed. If you win the title, your dad might come back now that there's a heavier belt to hit you with. Oh. 
<laughs> Dina, I'll say this. I'll say this. It's messed up. It's so messed up that men assume you're bad at math just because you're a retard. Eli is still very religious, so whenever there's a mass shooting, he sends thoughts and prayers and fan mail to the shooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm religious. You have a Comedy Central credit and you don't believe in miracles? Oh. Mm. Mm. Dana? Dana, you're gonna be the first terrorist to drive a short bus into a crowd of people. I love that, I love that. Then you get enough credit. <laughs> Thank you. Eli is scared of being possessed by demons. He's terrified that muscles might form if he were ever exercised. <laughs> That's what got him. Tina, uh, your father left you, but you do have a father figure, a dad bod. <laughs> so it back in 2016 or 17. Sure, sure, yep. She was hot back then. Eli is named after a Bible character who dies when he falls backwards out of a chair and breaks his neck. That guy is funnier sitting down than you'll ever be at stand-up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dessert Storm. Dina? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm. I don't mind it. Mm. I don't mind it. All right, so Eli Sayers, Dina Hashem. Um, since it was a title match, we'll talk about the actual result. Um, Eli won in a very controversial decision. Really? Um, and you know what's funny? I remember shortly after this battle happened, I went to New York for something and I met up with Eli at a bar and um, I was like, oh yeah, I just watched you and Dina. I was like, incredible battle. I was like, honestly, like, I think she got you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, re he was, that upset him. Because, oh. it, well, his perspective was you had to write so many jokes for this battle and she spent the whole second round doing sort of a gimmick which was very funny. And by the way, she clipped those actual, those are actually things he said on podcasts that right. she clipped out and did the thing. Um, but he's like, I had to write three rounds worth of jokes and she only had to write two and she could take her best jokes and edit out the ones that maybe weren't as good. And I'm like, damn, that's a valid kind of point that I didn't consider. So I did that, I guess, math with uh, Brandon Kiefer and... Uh, Tito. Tito. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I couldn't give it to Brandon for having a bit that legitimately should have won him the whole championship because it was creative. It was great. He had a feature basically for it with another, you know, another human yeah. writing, you know, being Tito's dad kind of a thing. Um, so it should have won, but it was a gimmick. And I'm like, Tito wrote jokes, though. Yeah. And I think Eli's right. He wrote jokes yeah. instead of doing a gimmick. So, yeah. And in his defense, he's right. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, uh, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. It's just such a good battle, man. It's so refreshing to to hear, like, so many different um, angles and, like, different types of writing and, yes. you know, the Mr. X and everything like that. And A lot of double, triple entendres. Yeah. I mean, it was just, there was an appreciating appreciation for the writing of it all. Right. You know, back in the day. And I think that's what I do miss the most when I do see some of the comments about some of our belly room battles of like, oh, L.A.'s falling down. And, you know, yeah, like there was we we, we had it too good in the mid to uh, 20 teens. And also, I, I think because it was like brand new and and I think we're going to get back there with the league. I think that, you know, there's a lot of cool things happening. But when you look at even in that, the amount of time she took to listen to his podcast, to find clips to cut up is probably more time than most people put into an entire battle now. It's hard work. Researching the character Eli from the Bible to get a great joke out of that. 
I'm not sure the battlers currently are doing that level of prep work. And I think it, it shows it's, it's always a little bit more surface level. Even the surface level jokes in this, I thought were really well written. Really well written. Yeah. Written the way he set up, she might be the best female comic in the city, but it's messed up to even say it that way. I mean, why would she be the best female comedian? And you put the emphasis on female to think that the second end of that is going to have male on the thing, but instead he's just like the 149th best comic or whatever he said. Like little things like that, cadence, uh, emphasis on certain words in the delivery, um, all of that shit is like super impressive to me. It was great. And then the uh, the foreshadowing, I guess we did, pre-battle <laughs> with uh, Yamanika coming in and just oh, yeah. talking over the beat like she's DJ Clue. <laughs> it was funny how you're like, oh, everybody, they all hate the black judges. Yeah. And it's like, we're motoring along, fun battle. And then all of a sudden you hear a voice bellowing from the back of the room. I don't even think she had a mic. No. <laughs> and she was the loudest part of the battle by like a mile. Um yeah, I was almost about to comment. I'm like, hey, what's going on with this? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there for sure will be some of those. Um, but yeah, just such a good battle. Um, Eli, uh, I get questions all the time about Eli. People are just like in my DMs, like, whatever happened to that guy? He's the Bigfoot of the roast battle. He is the Bigfoot of the roast battle. And I hope one day, I hope one day he's back. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of love for both of them. Great, great, great battle. Um, and we're going to keep it moving now with, like, another one. This is an L.A. versus New York clash. Uh, the precursor to Ryan Nesson versus John Ajota, which is going down tomorrow night at the RBL World Championships, which will be broadcast live on our YouTube from the Denver Improv. Um, but this one was arguably the, the GOAT and Keith Carey from L.A. in town taking on Zach Amico of uh, Legion of Skanks and Real Ass Podcast fame and um, another outstanding battle. Let's jump into it. Fight! Oh, shit. It is an honor to be roasting what happens if you feed me after midnight. First me and, me and Zach are both bisexual. I'm a top and he's a hippopotamus. <laughs> Keith was raised by his drug addict mother and a neo-Nazi stepfather. They're turning his life story into a movie called American History XXL. <laughs> Headshot. Zach's really into BDSM, so he's not too fat to stand up. His knees are just getting dominated by gravity. Mm. You know, man, I got to say this. Keith, you look a lot like uh, Slimmer. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Keith, you look a lot like Slimer. <laughs> Very true. And Zach, you look like if Jonestown had a Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> Keith's mom has been married five times. Keith, uh, what's been harder for you? Trying to give it a go with five stepfathers or... Trying to go farther than five steps. <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Zach actually just booked a huge gig, you guys. He's going to be the Macy's Parade float for getting raped in a porta potty at Ozfest. <laughs> it floats. <laughs> Keith is a Tourette's ridden, broke bisexual. He's like a Muslim guy's backpack. He makes other men nervous when they find him ticking in a bus station bathroom. <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> and he landed it. <gasps> oh, God, do I love that. Fuck, that's good. Round two, fight. Keith did theater in college, and he brought the house down. When he tried to hang himself in college and broke his door jam in his dorm room. <laughs> that's right, Keith failed at hanging himself, and his mother was a heroin addict. I guess she never taught him how to tie off properly. Well done. Keith used to work as a tour guide on a haunted boat ride, because nothing is scarier than hearing about ghosts from someone who's about to be one. Mm. Keith Carey is a lot like concealed carry. He can't get past in New York or L.A., and the last time he got into a gay bar, it ended tragically. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> really good. 
You guys, Zach's not just a comedian, he's also an actor. You may remember him from his greatest role, the one over his belt. <laughs> <laughs> Zach actually did full frontal nudity for a movie. You guys all saw the scene. He was getting in that hot tub with Jack Nicholson. Excellent! That's a, that a great Kathy Bates reference. Fuck you all. I don't know what's sadder, that Zach only has a career because he sucks Lewis's dick, or that he's clearly having an allergic reaction to it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I did the Real Ass Podcast yesterday. How are you the loudest, laziest person on a show hosted by a Puerto Rican? <laughs> Final round. Fight. Zach actually looks different than I thought he would. He usually has liberty spikes, but apparently he's so ugly, even his hair can't stay hard. <laughs> Keith's stepdad has a swastika tattooed across his stomach. And somehow, Keith still has the most horrifying midsection in his family. Shots fired! Shots fired! Yeah. Yeah. Zach's grandpa got Alzheimer's, he went brain dead, and then he drowned alone in a swimming pool. You had one vegetable in your life, and even it had to finish itself. Oh! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Norman's loving it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Keith has done three different shows where there have been shootings. It doesn't have anything to do with his comedy. It's all been poachers trying to get him for his ivory. I have a genuine question about Zach. How are you perfectly round, but also kind of shaped like a triangle? You look like somebody shaved the grimace. <laughs> Uh, Keith is on the fence as to whether he prefers boys or girls. Uh, on the fence is also where his first boyfriend's corpse was found strung up on. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Wow. That's real good. Matthew Shepard reference? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Zach has a pierced dick, and his father abandoned his mom. So I guess you both wasted money putting a ring on something you were never going to see again. <laughs> That's good. Keith was supposed to be on one of the planes that hit the World Trade Center and then traded in his ticket last minute. Keith, your bisexuality is such a crutch that even your flights have to go both ways. <laughs> Another one, man. Yeah. Another three rounds. You know, like you have to write three jokes or five jokes. You got to write, I don't know, they're doing 12, 14, something like that. 16, yeah. Yeah. Just it's a marathon. almost all of them good. Yeah, it's a Boston City Marathon. Yeah. <laughs> It really does. And it was an explosion. That was so much fun. Uh, Zach Amico, man, I just, I feel like he's such an underrated, he's the East Coast Keith Carey, I guess you could say, right? Like mm -hmm. the Bizarro, not even the Bizarro, just like mirror images of each other. They're going to hit you with something very smart, very silly, very morbid, very dark. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's going to hit you in a way that you're like, oh, I did not even see that coming. But yeah. Well below the surface, or if it's of the surface, it's going to be the best surface level joke you probably heard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, with the dark and morbid stuff, like, that's something that I, I, that's the one thing that I watch this, and I'm like, I'm not sure we need to bring that into the current era. You know what I mean? Like, um, the the shock value kind of stuff. Um, but the structure of the jokes, again, is just like, like when he said the, the, the Muslim guy's uh, backpack, Makes people nervous when he's ticking because Keith has facial tics in right. a in a get in a bus station bathroom, yeah. and then Keith Carey is like concealed carry. He'll never get passed in New York or L.A. Like right there, there's so many layers to that, and then you follow that up with and the last time he went into a gay club and ended, ended tragically, yeah. referencing like the Pulse uh, nightclub shooting yeah. in Orlando, 2018. Yeah, yeah, like it's not like he sat down and he was like, "Let me write a joke about this nightclub shooting." He was like, let me, Keith Carey, concealed carry, and then he went in all these directions and then came to it at the end. So it wasn't like, it's not lazy writing at all. It's all really, like, focused and, um, yeah, just so layered. 
Yeah, you keep like you're you're nailing the battlers, all the new battlers. Like, yeah, watch this. I want you guys to be more like this. Have layers, you know, have structure. Have some levels to this. I think it's important because, like, when we came up, the thing that we had to look at was Greg Giraldo and Jeff Ross and, like, the Comedy Central roasts were still very much a big thing in, like, 2013. Mm -hmm. So there was something you could study. And now I feel like the younger battlers, they're coming up on roast battle clips, right? But they're they're... Everybody gravitates more towards the newer stuff because it's it, the audio is better, the video is better, everything like right. that. But, like, I just think if you're studying... If you're a young basketball player, I don't care if the footage is grainy. I would rather you study Jordan than Michael Jordan than Jordan Poole. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like you should you should be studying the best and being like, how do I get to that level? Because you know, six seven years ago, we were all striving to be at that level because we knew our opponents would, and I think it just elevated everybody. It's not an indictment of the newer battlers as much as it is just an acknowledgement of God. What a what a special era. And I would love to see this again. Yes. This was a joke writer showcase. Right now, we're probably not showcasing some of the best jokes in certain areas of the Roast Battle League to say that these are professionals. But, I mean, this is off the backs of these guys who made this a professional sport. I mean, we had three seasons here in the States because of this joke writer showcase. It was the hottest thing in Los Angeles and New York for a yeah. solid, I don't know how many years. But, I mean, this literally created why we talk about this every week was because we're such geeks about this writing and, and the way they can perform this writing. I mm -hmm. mean, this is why we're here. I'll say this of the 16 cities we have this year. If one of them can elevate to this kind of standard, that's your next champion. Hell yeah. By let's, a mile. Let's go Tokyo. Yeah. Step up your fucking game, Japan. All right. Uh, let's get into a battle that is just really, 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 really mean. This is one of the most vicious battles in recorded history. This is a one-rounder with an overtime. Um, this is a battle that, uh, yeah, let's just watch it. Let's just watch it. If you guys buckle the fuck up for this one. Scott Chaplin, Evan Williams, here it is. Let's roast! All right. Let's do it, buddy. Mm -hmm. Scott, you look like you've been a senior in high school for eight years. Scott's dad was an abusive, drunk cop, and now he's in hell. The only... <laughs> it's true, he's burning in hell right now. The only what? angel in Scott's life is his sister's stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man. <laughs> All right, well, now I got to change it up because he was very rude and I wasn't going <laughs> to... He's my fucking friend. Yeah, it was gonna... <laughs> all right, here we go, scumbag. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right, okay. Uh, Evan is a recovering alcoholic. I'm just wondering, were the 12 steps you took to recover the same steps your mother fell down when she overdosed on prescription meds? <laughs> I mean, here we go. <laughs> what kind of stupid bitch overdoses on pres mm, yeah. Anna Nicole Smith? Yeah. <laughs> dumb slut. Yeah. <laughs> what a dumb slut his mother was. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious, Scott. That's hilarious. Uh, my mom loved me and passed. Your dad passed on loving you, Scott. Okay? So fucking, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Scott's, man. Scott's dad was, Scott's dad was such Shut a bad up, alcoholic that he actually never started drinking. If only Scott's dad was a comic. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking hit my... Th oh, that was funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Evan started lifting weights after his mother and brother passed away. Yeah, his fucking brother's dead, too. Uh, <laughs> it's true. I'm just... It's true. <laughs> yeah, the only thing stronger than him is the smell of their corpses. Anyway, um, I'm just... <laughs> no, they smell. They've been rotting. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering... They were, they were cremated. They don't smell. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> you try to snort them, you fucking addict? Listen. Um, <laughs> ah! Listen. Ben, <laughs> dumb faggot. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. Half a fag. Uh, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, when you're, uh, when, when you're at the gym and you do deadlifts, do you call them mom lifts? Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good? All right. Cool, it's, uh, cool, cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right. Uh, uh, Battle of the Dead Parents, everybody. What's up? 
We're all going to fucking hell. We're all going to hell. We're all going to hell. We're all going We're all going to hell. God damn it, Scott. Which was a further stretch? The idea that your career would really take off or your cousin's neck after he hung himself? My God, you two. Which one? God. Which one's a further stretch? Oh. Which take one the, is it? Take the title, son. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Who's... Who? Wait. Who's fucking... Fucking God! Oh, God damn. This is good. This is good. Good work. Okay. Uh, Whose <laughs> dead family's funnier, guys? Who is it? All right. All right. All right. All right. We go all goddamn day on this dead parent shit, baby. You all want right, a fan right. event? Let's do it. All right. Let's go softer because I didn't write that much about your dead family. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so let's lay off. All right. It's getting old. Uh, this is actually true. This is actually a specific thing about Evan that's true. Uh, Evan is so short that doctors. All right, doctors thought that he was his brother's life expectancy. <laughs> He's fucking dead. His brother's dead. Oh. My brother's dead. What kind of shitty doctor thought you were your brother's... No wonder your whole family's dead. Okay. My brother's oh, dead, my guys. God. My brother is dead. Scott. <laughs> uh, Scott, you stepbrother that moves in and calls it his house. I... <laughs> 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 Scott's oh, closer, all right, very funny guy. Scott's closer Thanks, buddy. is about the Muppets and 9-11. It's a genuinely good joke. It's a pretty good joke. <laughs> and, and like the Muppets, the guy that made you was dead. <laughs> and unlike 9-11, you'll never make an impact on this city. <laughs> My God, <laughs> He's got good ones. He's got good ones. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't have, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got this way. I don't have two parters or anything like that. Yeah, um, okay, two parters. I just like this was like I worked on it for a day, but all right. Yeah, uh, you're, you're cooler know, in you know. this tournament, bro. Yeah, I'm really cool in this tournament. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh. Evan told me, Evan told me, like, you know, the, so Evan does these battles, right? And he'll do like an impression of every person he does. He's like, he wants to be an actor and stuff. Uh, he really, he wants to be an actor. He told me in confidence, but uh, so far, <laughs> <laughs> he's like wants to like, be in a movie. He thinks he's like Will Ferrell. Anyway, that was a real moment uh, we had, Scott. Anyway, but uh, so far, but so far, sadly, the only recurring role he's played is Paul Bearer at a family member's funeral. There it is. There it is. They're still there dead. Are is. they still dead? They're, They're still, still dead. dead. Okay. Is your dad still dead? Battle, battle. One more jump. Let's go. All right, all right. Uh, ever, <laughs> Evan's brother and mother both choked to death. One from a disease and one from an overdose. Following tradition, Evan choked this year at Montreal. He fucking, he ate a dick. Let's go ahead and bring it home, Scott. It's going to get a little weird now, and I hope you're on board with this, okay? Oh, you're Scott, okay. <laughs> Scott, Scott, let's talk about the dead family, all right? You've lost... Your, your what? Your, your uncle, your cousin, and your dad. And I've lost my mom, my brother, and my aunt. So together, yeah. we're like one big horrible fucking family. You know what I mean? I smell a sitcom. There's a story of a dead cop's widow <laughs> whose husband beat on their very lovely kids. Oh my God. All of them had shitty jobs. Like a stripper. That's his sister. His <laughs> mother. The middle one kills pigs. He works at a slaughterhouse, man. okay? All right. Oh, man. There's a story of Evan's father who had lost a couple members of his house. Oh, man. Not even hitting the <laughs> But notes, unlike by the way. Scott's dad, he had loved them <laughs> and did not beat his spouse. <laughs> Look, like I'm done. Yeah, let's jump the shark, guys. Wait, he has more. Till the one day. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Till the one day that this widow met this fella. <laughs> who did not throw liquor bottles at the wall. And he did not wear a badge or beat black people. <laughs> So she decided that he would raise them all. The Williams Bunch. Come on, everybody. The, the Williams, Williams Bunch. bunch. That's, That's the way we all became the Williams Bunch. Wow. Oh. Wow. 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 W
also like that he said Williams. Yeah. He's his dad. Yeah, he took ownership of that family. That's... Yeah. 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 Pat. Unbelievable. That might be the greatest Rose battle I've ever seen. I mean, obviously, I, I've seen it multiple times, but every time I see it, I am wowed by it because it does everything you want. It it, it takes you out of this, this roast battle or your mama or snaps or just like you look like or roast me of it all. They go so beyond. They make it a Comedy Central roast of or a Friars Club roast of. It's two best friends. You know they're having a good time. They know so much about each other. Everybody's having a good time. The level of joke writing is off the chain because... They don't mind that they're saying this horrible, horrible stuff about each other. Nothing is off limits. And you can tell they're having a good time because, first of all, the one person that wrote something or was reciting something was Scott. Evan was just, I mean, all those jokes that Evan had and he memorized all those, even the song at the end, I mean, that's insane work. Scott Chaplin is, is my favorite battler who doesn't do this anymore, but even when he was like in his prime doing this, he was my favorite because... Everything rolls off that guy. It just just feels like a ball uh, busting session with Scott Chaplin. He can go into any room and roast. I feel like, and he and people are gonna love him for it. Yeah, he has all the styles. But yeah, I'll, I'll stop. You know, waxing poetic about it. I just I love that thing. Well, it encapsulates what the mission statement of roast battle is supposed to be, right? Like that is at at its core what I love about the show. To people saying absolutely horrific things about each other and nobody takes it personally. It's this, it's this fucked up friendship kind of experience. Um, and you, you can, you can definitely like feel the love on, on, on the stage there, which is like, yeah, that's, that's the idea. That's what we're doing. Nothing's off limits. We're all agreeing to this thing. And you know, it's just, um, it's the way we express love to each other. As weird as that sounds like that is all of my best friends in LA are people I battled who said horrible things about my family. And that's just, that is, that warms my heart to see, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't know if that's heartwarming for anybody else, but for me as a roast battler, that's, that's the kind of shit you love. It's just, it was just so perfect. It went back and forth. Um, just when you thought they were done, they were never done. They just kept raising the bar. Every single joke raised the bar a little bit higher than the one before it. Um, yeah, it's just everything you would ever want in a battle. Um, yeah. and, and Scott Chaplin, one of the more underrated characters in the history. When we, when we say characters, we, I think people gravitate towards like a digits or a bear, some like really big over the top right. kind of like gimmicky kind of thing. Alex Hooper, Scott Chaplin, just like you, you, you said it the way everything rolls off of them. The ad libbing between jokes, constantly giving props to his opponent, putting himself down to tag their joke and make it even better. Like, the, the whole attitude of like, whatever, dude, I spent 20 minutes on this thing. He's well, look at, look at right. him over here fucking preparing. What a fucking loser. Like, um, I just, I, I love it all. The dynamic between the two of them. It was just, uh, that's one of those lightning in a bottle moments. It really was. I mean, and Scott just has this like wrestling style almost where it's like, he's doing a backhanded compliment when he's doing his jokes, but that when he's like doing the asides or like the ad libs, he's just like flexing on you. So then you roll, he rolls you over in a sense, you know? So it's, yeah, I can't keep. I mean, just keep like I can spouse about this all day. But yeah. this thing was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th those, uh, those like he the joke gets the crowd laughing, and over their laughter, he's just like, eh, "Fucking dumb family's <laughs> dead." Like, <laughs> yeah. can you imagine being so fucking dumb you die? Like, ah, oh, so good, so good, so good. We could talk about that battle all day. Um, again, I would just say anybody who is uh who's watching, take notes, take notes. Maybe um your opponent doesn't have a menagerie of dead relatives to choose from, but study the, uh, the structure of the joke writing or kill your family or kill their family before the battle. That would be an effective strategy. If you murder their entire family and then have five jokes about it, you will win. I've never had somebody call into the roast battle to roast from the, uh, from the pen. So yeah, <laughs> it'd be a first jail battle. Let's yeah. do it. Um, this is another really good one, uh, between, uh, two battlers that have kind of blown up since, uh, since this happened in different ways. Kim Congdon, as you often say, our most, uh, search for battler. She, uh, just filmed her first special. She's killing it out here in LA. Um, she was living in New York for a while and, uh, she went up against Maddie Smith. It was now a, uh, series regular on Wild and Out, uh, several seasons deep on that. And uh, they had a great battle in 2018. Let's check it out. Fight. Maddie has a body like Lena Dunham, 
and a face like Lena Dunham's body. <laughs> First one. All right, I just want to say that Kim is so pretty for a comedian. And <laughs> Kim looks like she'd asked to add an Instagram filter to a mugshot. Uh, Maddie's dad works for FedEx, and tonight she's following in his footsteps by delivering other people's shit. Mm. Mm. Kim's best friend died in a car crash, and it was heartbreaking for Kim to hear the news when she sobered up. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie's dating an autistic guy. Uh, she hasn't been on TV, but her boyfriend's on Spectrum. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Kim, you look like a Disney princess found her prince in family court. Brutality. Kim has a boyfriend. Kim and her boyfriend are both half Puerto Rican, so together they make one domestic violence call a night. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie has auburn hair. Auburn is also what her retarded boyfriend says whenever he plays with matches. <laughs> Kim's a stoner Puerto Rican, so when she says she loves 420, I don't know if she's talking about weed or her hourly rate for cleaning apartments. <laughs> Round two, fight. Thank you. All right, you can tell Kim's a stoner because she's a lot like weed, so chill, and might someday be legal in America. <laughs> Kim used to be fat. She lost the weight by doing squats on an NFL player's face. <laughs> Kim is part Native American. I would call her a redskin, but after dating that football player, it's more black and blue. Yeesh. Oh, Kim, you happy trail of tears. <laughs> Why do you look like a middle schooler and the babysitter who teaches her how to give head? Thank you. <laughs> My turn? Okay. Uh, going down on Maddie is a lot like eating sushi because the ginger smells like fish. <laughs> uh, fun fact, Maddie's actually not even her name. It's just how she describes her pubes. Oh! <laughs> so true. <laughs> Uh, Maddie takes the blue line home. Blue lines are also what cover her gross, veiny tits. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, you guys, what do you call Maddie at a beauty contest? Uh, the ticket booth girl. <laughs> yes. Yeah! <laughs> Final round, fight! Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, if you connect Maddie's freckles together, it turns out you don't actually have to listen to her talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kim, you look like you trap your rapist with a pregnancy scare. First one. That's so First good. one. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you, inspiration for normal Barbie. <laughs> uh, Maddie is obsessed with working out her childhood issues by eating a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kim's ex-boyfriend was bisexual. When he came out, he told her, baby, I gotta tell you, I'm also attracted to women. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Thank you, hottest girl at a British homeless shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, Maddie's parents got divorced 13 years ago. Her parents are a lot like her legs in college. She just couldn't keep them together. Oh. Oh, Kim, you look like you thought the OJ documentary was a rom com. <laughs> you know, uh, before, <laughs> before meeting Kim, I wasn't sure what kind of Hispanic she was. And then she told me her dad's a cokehead and her mom's a maid. And then I was like, oh. Yeah, I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie told me that she likes guys who play golf. 
Uh, Maddie, they don't play golf. It's just when you walk by, they go, four! Oh, <laughs> no! Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's outstanding. <sighs> Kim has daddy issues, I assume. Kim was, Kim was furious after Hurricane Maria when Trump threw rolls of paper towels at Puerto Ricans. She saw the video and yelled, what a waste of tampons. <laughs> Another great one. It's I, like uh, I, like uh, race jokes versus uh, body shaming. Body shaming somebody who looks completely normal to me. That's one of the great mysteries of roast battle, how somebody could be, if you're anything other than the perfect physical ideal, you are going, they're going to act like you are the ugliest person on earth. Right. If, yeah, if we're on stage and I, I'm, I'm skinnier than you, then you're fat automatically. doesn't yes. matter. Right. If, uh, if I think I'm more attractive, you're ugly automatically. Automatically. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, all the jokes about like, she has Lena Dunham, Lena Dunham's body. Like, I don't know. I thought she was like really skinny. No, she's got Lena Dunham's body's face. Yes. That's, <laughs> Her face has Lena Dunham's justice body. Justice the jokes. Oh, uh, I mean, some of these were really, really, really good. I yeah. thought, and you can see, I like this because you can see that Maddie, it really did hurt her. Some of those body shaming jokes. She's like, okay. I was like, oh, she got her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She got her. <clears throat> she started doing those uh, reactions like, oh, no. The body uh, shaming got her. I think the race jokes didn't really touch Kim so much. I think if Maddie would have went with some body shaming jokes on Kim, that might have like kind of gotten Kim out of her element a little bit and might have uh, tilted this towards Maddie's favor. But Kim was so calm and collected, I think, with her body shaming jokes. And then when you could see that she knew she had Maddie, you could see her kind of egging it on more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Kim murdered that second round. That uh, the the whole run of like the blue lines on Earth, <laughs> the ginger smells like Gross fish. Mania. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, mean. It was all it was all good, and then uh, the haymaker at the end was the four. Yes, the four <laughs> joke. And you knew that guy, Maddie. Maddie's like, ah. Yeah. Man. Um. Yeah. I mean, really, really good. I I said to you, I'm not sure if it, it's in the episode or not. Like, I'm not sure if we're doing picture in picture. We didn't even talk about, it. but it was mean of me to make anybody follow Scott and Evan. Um, but the, I, this was another really, really good one. They're all really, really good. And we're taking from an entire five year period, the best five battles. So it's unfair of me to say like, they were all this good back then. They, they weren't, this is a best of kind of thing. Let's put that in perspective. At that point, we're what, like four or five years old. I mean, these guys are definitely four years old by that point. I think, yeah, this is no, like probably three yeah. years old. I think, yeah, I think a lot of this shit's from uh 2018. So okay, yeah. we had kind of, they're kind of peaking at this point. Exactly. We, we 2016, 17 was like definitely the belly room era. Mm hmm. 15 through 17, and then 18 was the Roastmasters, and then they ended abruptly in 18. So you're catching the tail end of it, and um, yeah, they were just, uh, they were all on fire. By the way, before we get into the next battle, I just want to address something here. I've been sweating this entire episode, and I've been silently panicking that I'm having some sort of, like, episode, or I'm, like, tweaking or something like that, right? I'm like, is my fucking ADD meds, is, is am I having a bad reaction? The thing on the wall tells the temperature in Celsius. I just Googled it. It's like 77 degrees in here. It's nice. It sucks. This is so hot. Are you kidding me? I feel great. Really? Yeah, it's cool. And every week it's like 50, 50 in here. Yeah. And then this week, for whatever reason, to me, it's scorching hot. And I might also be having one of those reactions. I don't know. Shout out Deaf Noodles Comedy Club and uh, Sunset Media for taking care of us in here with the temperature being so comfortable. And the uh, the media being so crisp and clear. I am dying. I am dying here. The whole episode, I've been like wiping sweat from my... It's... Anyway, we got to go back to the 50 degrees. Oh, I feel some air. Hell yeah. Thank you, Def. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, I should have asked for it three battles ago. I wouldn't have been freaking out the whole time. But anyway, we're at the end now. So Championship uh, week, everybody. Championship week. It's heating up. I love that. Uh... This is our final battle of the episode. This was from a tournament they did um, that was very similarly structured to what we're doing this week with the championship. Uh, two semifinals in the same night and then the championship. But first, 
a runner-up third place battle, which we will also be doing in Denver. This was the runner-up third place battle, um, and it's a it's a great one between JP McDade, who is one of the few golden era New York guys who still does it. He'll be at the mothership. Uh, on April 7th, battling yes. out there. Love, love, love JP. One of my favorite comics. Going up against Matt Marin, who is a guy we don't see much on this podcast because he runs uh, a rival gang in New York. He is the uh, the head of Comedy Fight Club out there. Uh, of course, uh, we have Roast Battle New York. He does his own thing. Um, but... Uh, Great guy, uh, great guy to talk baseball with, um, and uh, really funny uh, roaster. So I think it's his first time on the podcast uh, on this Roastmasters retrospective. So let's jump into it. JP McDade, Matt Marin, here it is. All right, you guys may recognize JP as the rack you all hung your coats on on the way in tonight. First blood. JP reminds me of the country chili because he's long, thin, and also once had a bunch of miners trapped underground. Matt, Matt, you never wear sleeves, and I still don't believe you have shoulders. Perfect. I've seen better definition in Chris Crespo's pencil sketches. <laughs> JP is, it's ironic he's from Newtown, Connecticut, because he looks like he lost his virginity at a beach house to a Sandy Hooker. Matt, uh, Matt skipped his prom the way the Jets skipped the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> JP is one tall drink of water with the roofie in it. <laughs> you look like you had to pretend not to enjoy the gay stuff your fraternity made you do. Hey, hey. Uh, round of applause for Matt Mowen. <laughs> you look like you bullied a kid with Down syndrome so much that you got stuck with the voice. JP used to work as a banker. When, when Capital One asks what's in your wallet, JP says a condom I'm gonna secretly slip up before fucking a high school girl. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Matt needs to get back to haunting that campground. <laughs> you look like the guy at Goodwill who enforces the dress code. <laughs> JP looks like he still hangs basketball posters on his bedroom walls because apparently everybody in Newtown, Connecticut stays eight years old forever. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> the, uh, the video of Ric Flair announcing his retirement makes Matt tear up. <laughs> That's just a fact. I guess, I guess it just hits close to home to see a beat up, discolored dick stop working. Uh, nice, quick uh, one rounder to close us out. Um, JP, one of the most consistent roast battlers we've ever had. Still doing it. Um, been around 10 years. Uh, you know, and, and just one of the guys who just really loves doing it and writing roast jokes. And he's really good and, and different from a lot of the other writing we saw on this episode. New York definitely had their own style, their own kind of voice. And JP is, is a little bit more outside the box. Um, but his shit hits super hard. JP is the scariest roast battler, I think, in history to me because wow. you don't know what he's going to say. He doesn't really have a predictable style because 
he can do an impression of you. He can mimic you, yep. right? And he's going to do a very, very, very smart joke that's going to probably cut you to your core like he did with Matt's, uh, you know, his about his voice. Yes. Right? Yeah. I was like, that's so mean. But it still got Matt to a point where Matt was laughing like, oh, that's good. But that really hurts me. Yeah. To, to speak to that, and I might have told this story on the podcast before, but I battled JP in 2017. And you talk about how, like, um, esoteric kind of his style is, you know, I went into the battle, like I have a fat joke rebuttal and I have this rebuttal and I have that rebuttal. And I'm, I'm listening to the other person to see if anything triggers those mm -hmm. rebuttals. And JP's first joke, he got up there and he was like, Pat, it looks like somebody drew you while they were riding a horse. Oh, and the whole crowd is going nuts. And I, in my calling an audible at the line of scrimmage brain. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't even know what rebuttal to use. <laughs> I don't know what he just said about, I don't know if that was an ugly joke, a fat joke, all of the above. I couldn't even put it into, I don't know what the premise was. I just knew everybody in the crowd was laughing at me. He had unlocked something about me visually that I never knew about myself. And I was so flummoxed. <laughs> I didn't know. I had no idea what to do. You used flummoxed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was on stage like, what What do I even do right now? I had no idea. It was crazy. He's very, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would never, uh, he's got Jezelnik. Obviously, he does an impression of Jezelnik on. Uh, Great Jezelnik yeah, impression. Yeah, on, uh, it was yeah. a sticker treat uh, on, it was on Peacock or whatever. Anyway, but yeah, he is, he's scary. Like, yeah. scary, scary, scary with his writing. Scott Chaplin also, but I mean, like, JP, because he still does it today, he is like, he's a surgeon. Yeah. And like like a like a demented surgeon. And one of those guys who's just good at a lot of things. The impressions, the Jeselnik is great. He has a online there's a really good Sebastian Maniscalco one too. Yes. Uh, that he did at Sticker yes. Treat one year. Um obviously he's he's a great stand up. He's going around opening for Stavros right now. Right, yeah. Um just Hell recorded recorded yeah. his first special. Um and also just a great writer. When I was doing the the Sports Illustrated Awards, um in uh, 2016, 2017, 2018 came along and I had another gig. I couldn't do it. And mm -hmm. it was in New York. And they were like, do you recommend anybody? And I recommended JP and he wrote for the awards and, and crushed it. Oh, so, so of course he did. Yeah. He's just he's just one of those guys who can cross over and kind of like do anything. Um, and just super, super talented. Um, yeah. Shout I, out McDay, baby. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Matt Marin is just like a lot of fun. Another guy who's like a character. He goes up there like... Part of his charm is being a target, and uh, you know he he receives the jokes really well, and uh, you know he writes some. Uh, I, I know for Matt, the opportunity to roast somebody who went to uh, Sandy Hook mm -hmm. was probably like he was salivating at that right. opportunity. That's right <laughs> up his alley, um, and he he had a, he had some really really good jokes too. But JP is just next level to me. Next level, but yeah, shout out Matt Marin and uh, the Comedy Fight Club, and they got a, a whole YouTube channel. Check those guys out. They uh, they do a show at the Stand. I want to say once or twice a month. Yeah, something. Yeah, um, I I know they had bounced around a little bit. I don't know all the details now, but I know that uh, you know, he's been running that show for a long, long time, and he puts he puts as much effort into that show as like we do into this. So yeah. I respect that. Yeah, we love Big Matt time. Marin. Yeah, um, thanks for keeping the sport alive, man. Absolutely. It's gone down three degrees Celsius since I said something. You feel better? Oh my God. I feel like a million dollars. I, the whole episode was ruined in my head because it was so hot. And now let's start over. Okay. Just want to do the whole, Hey everybody, welcome to RBL weekly. <laughs> no, uh, this was a great episode. A lot of fun, fun trip down memory lane. Uh, make sure you're tuning in tomorrow to our YouTube, uh, 8 30 PM mountain time. Uh, check your local listings for what that means for you. Watch, the World Championships live on YouTube. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? Let's roast! Roast Battle League Commissioner Pat Barger here with some upcoming tour dates. If you are out uh, across America and you want to see the Roast Battle, these are some of your opportunities. Let's start with the Comedy Mothership. We will be back there February 11th, March 3rd, April 7th. The first two dates, tickets are on sale now. We had previously said on this podcast, February 11th was sold out. Not the case. There was an error on the website. It's been fixed. Tickets are available, but they won't be for long. Jump online. Get those. The next round of the California Cup at Jam in the Van here in L.A. is February 22nd. 
Those tickets are invite only. They're free of charge. So make sure you get on Jam in the Van's mailing list if you want to come to that show. February 28th, we will be in Tacoma, Washington at the uh, Nate Jackson Super Funny Comedy Club for our Seattle area debut. Tickets are on sale for that right now. We'll be coming to Tempe. Let me pull these dates up, make sure I got this right. Tempe at the Improv, March 13th. It will be the, the first date in a series of monthly residencies that we have. March 16th, we will be in the Dallas Fort Worth area at the Big Laugh Comedy Club. Tickets on sale for that now every Tuesday at uh, the Comedy Store here in LA. Remember, every Tuesday, RBL Weekly drops. Every Thursday, a new full-length episode drops here on the YouTube. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking us out.